Documentaries. Why do they seem like the black sheep of the film world with many more watching fictional films than films that are actually about something in real life? Do we prefer escaping into another world that we don't know because reality can be too hard? Okay, maybe that last point is a bit overdramatic, but still. I feel like for every 50 great fictional movies made, there comes just one great documentary that's made. Which is kind of a shame because sometimes truth can be stranger than fiction, and boy do some of the documentaries that I've seen really live up to that. So in keeping with my promise from last year and recommending more good movies instead of just highlighting bad ones like most other channels, I want to recommend a list of great documentaries that you should watch because I had fun making that Christmas movie recommendation video last year. Some of these are also on YouTube making them even easier to watch and I'll make a note of which ones with links in the description below. There are around 60 documentaries that I want to talk about over several videos so without further ado, let's get started. This had better be good! First up is American Movie directed by Chris Smith. The film follows the independent filmmaker Mark Boucher as he struggles to get one of his feature films made with little to no budget. This could easily be one of my favourite documentaries on the list and I'm not sure why not many people know of this because the subject matter of this movie is so genuine and hilarious that it really is one of the more heartwarming documentaries that I've seen. You don't need to even care about anything to do with filmmaking to enjoy this film because the lead character does a great job of making you naturally care about his life and not in a depressed way where you feel sad for him but rather you just want him to succeed so badly because he's just so funny and passionate about movies. This film has so many hilarious unscripted scenes and even the people that are friends with Mark Boucher are just as funny. I really can't recommend this film enough because it's probably my favorite documentary. Hey Mike, make sure everyone has brown gloves. Does everyone have brown gloves? Oh dude, dude, dude. <laughs> you got, you got. I have some here. Next up is not just one film but a collection known as the 7-Up series directed by Michael Apted and Paul Almond. I say collection because this is a series that takes a group of children at the age of seven from various backgrounds and asks them every seven years questions about what's happened in their lives and what will they be doing in the future. While there are some aspects that could be improved, for example showing a lot more interview footage and evenly spreading them apart in the earlier films, overall the series is pretty amazing and fascinating to watch because it could be one of the most forward thinking films I've ever seen and it probably best Boyhood which did something similar but over a shorter age span. After watching one entry I'm immediately looking forward to seeing how they're going to turn out seven years later given what they said previously. I also love how in their older years they don't just talk about themselves but also the process of what making these films is like. Of course you are just getting a snapshot of their lives one day out of every seven years but each interview does well to quickly bring you up to speed on what's happened and importantly how each has changed as a person. Not to mention some of the before and after comparisons are just hilarious. By 21 Simon was working in the freezer room of Wall Sausages in London. I know I can't stay at Walls forever. I mean it's just not me. I couldn't stay there for that long, I'd, my mind would go dead. No, I'm quite happy to stay there. Next is Man on Wire, directed by James Marsh. The film surrounds the background leading up to the death-defying feat achieved by Philippe Petit, who somehow managed a tightrope between the two World Trade Center towers. While I'd say this film can drag with its pace at times, almost like it's milking how incredible the actual event was, thankfully the subject matter is actually an interesting character to watch. He's got a lot of quirky mannerisms, and the way his thoughts on why he would even do such a thing are almost as interesting as seeing him do the thing itself. Regardless, this film is worth watching just for the amazing event alone. What if the guard is still around? What if he's toying with us, waiting for us to make the slightest movement before he pounces on us? We must wait. To ease the torment, I return to my memories, the gold and mud, years of dreaming, months of organizing. I dive back into the past for a long while. Next is Free Solo, directed by Elizabeth Chai Veseli and Chimmy Chin. This is a movie that documents the events surrounding an incredible death-defying challenge by rock climber Alex Honnold as he attempts to achieve the longest free climb in history. Not that I want to take anything away from Man on Wire, but in terms of doing something absolutely crazy with an intense amount of training and skill, to me Alex has this in spades. There's so many amazing shots of him climbing that you think, holy crap, how are they actually filming this? And the fact that someone had to set up those cameras is almost as amazing as watching him do those climbs. But just like American Movie, the best part about this film is watching the subject matter's personality in Alex. He's just so genuine but also inadvertently hilarious with his view on life, rock climbing, and in particular his girlfriend that makes the whole film really feel personal. I watched this with a group of friends and we were often laughing at great scenes with hilarious quotes that I think just really elevates this film from not being just another documentary about a guy who tries to do something dangerous. I just thought he was really cute, but also brutally honest, but I'm really drawn to that. Having the girlfriend in the van is awesome. 
I mean, she's, she's cute and small and like livens the place up a bit. Doesn't take up too much room. Next is The Red Chapel, directed by Mads Brugger. Along with Free Solo, this could be one of the ballsiest documentaries I've seen, but in a completely different way. It chronicles the journey of the director and two Danish comedians who traveled to North Korea under the pretense of being a small theater group sent there to put on a play as part of a cultural exchange. In reality, the three of them are trying to portray the absurdity of the pantomime life of the people of North Korea who are institutionalized under the rule of a powerful dictatorship. I genuinely have no clue how Mads Brugger managed to get this group invited to go to North Korea, let alone keep in character and actually film from inside the country. This is the first time comedians were ever allowed into North Korea and I'm so glad we could actually watch it happen. An incredibly ballsy but also emotional film with some very darkly comedic moments. I have brought a book by the great Danish worker hero Pete Hein. Mm -hmm. He was like a socialist hero and I would like to read aloud a, a, a nice little poem by him. What love is like. It says love is like a pineapple sweet and undefinable when we are in front of the statue. Oh is this a uh, wishing what? What? Wishing for what? Uh, as, a, as, a, as a gesture to uh, your dear leader, oh. um, like, a, like a, something from Denmark. Is that okay? Uh, let me ask her. Next is Hot Coffee, directed by Susan Saladoff. The film's title comes from the monumental case of a woman's attempt to sue McDonald's for serving her an extremely hot cup of coffee that accidentally spilled into her lap and severely burnt her. And if that initially sounds like a complete overreaction, then trust me, wait till you see how badly she was burnt. I love that this film reels you in with an interesting lawsuit, but actually builds upon that with more examples that just get worse and worse and really challenge your first reaction when you hear stories like this. The last half of this film is kind of horrifying and you might be left wondering why these laws are still allowed. Definitely a film that brings a new meaning to not judging a book by its cover and will hopefully leave you a little wiser. Hey, are you going to show me the burns? Yeah. What? Yeah. Would that change your mind at all? Wow. Yes, if I saw injuries like that, I would definitely uh, take a different view of it from what I hear from the media. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Next is Collapse, directed by Chris Smith. This film is unique on this list because it only focuses on one subject in one location with one central interview that was recorded over five days to create essentially one 82 minute monologue. But not one of those minutes is ever boring. The subject in question is Michael Rupert, a former LAPD officer who for the last 20 to 30 years has been a self-described investigative reporter and radical thinker with an incredibly impressive knowledge on some of the biggest issues in the world and often confronting but truthful belief system on what's happening. Even if you don't agree with him, the points he makes are bound to create an interesting discussion with your friends. I'd recommend this film to anyone who's interested in why climate change is such a complex issue, but also to anyone who wants to learn more about what are the current problems we face moving forward. All plastic is, is oil. Most paints, all pesticides are made from oil. Uh, everything from toothpaste to toothbrushes is made from oil. There is nothing anywhere in any combination that will, will replace the edifice built by fossil fuels. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, you've, uh, you've seen a lot of movies, haven't you? Yeah. And you basically know how to frame shots? <clears throat> I guess. No, not really. But, <laughs> but I mean, if you would see an action, you would kind of like f centrifugally focus on it, it being in the center? Yeah, I'd, I can figure that out, yeah. <laughs>